Hello and welcome. I'm Susan Spears, your host for the Leader to Leader podcast. Our guest today is Kevin Dillard. He is the founder, president, and CEO of Life Care Medical Transports here in the Fredericksburg, Virginia region. Kevin, welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, I do. I am so lucky because I do get to see Kevin pretty often here in the Fredericksburg community. Uh, not only do I see him because he is an active member of the Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, but, you know, he runs a company that he's going to tell you about. Uh, they have ambulances all over the place. And every time I see one um, just out there in service in our community, I think about you, Kevin, and the team over there at Life Care. He's a great team of, of leaders there. And um, as I looked over his bio, uh, I was pretty, pretty amazed that he has more than 40 years of experience in emergency medical services. He's going to talk a little bit about that with you. And he's also really active in the in the community, giving back on local and state and national boards. So we may touch on some of that. He has a background with an MBA in business, business administration from Averett College and a bachelor's degree in economics from the University of Mary Washington right here in our backyard in Fredericksburg, Virginia. So that's my long way of saying, again, welcome, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, I want to start. It's a leadership podcast, so let's talk about it. T tell me about your leadership journey. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first off, I consider myself a lifelong learner, and I enjoy learning from others. And that started off very early for me, um, actually, in, in high school. So I had two parallel tracks going. One, I was in the Boy Scouts of America, and I had the opportunity to lead a small group of people for a period of time, and that really uh, spiked my interest in leadership and then when I was a senior in high school some of my friends encouraged me to uh, run for class president and I had never run for any type of elected office so that was really fun because I had the opportunity to talk to a lot of people do a lot of listening and come up with a vision on where we wanted to go in the future so when I was elected class president I thought that was something that would last a year and here it is 40 some years later <laughs> I find out that there's still some expectations there. Yeah, you're still running the reunions, right? That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. So uh, so my involvement in the Boy Scouts and, and then as class president in high school, that kind of started off my leadership journey. And then as I was transitioning out of high school into college, I became more involved in the community, and specifically the local volunteer rescue squad, mm -hmm. the Fredericksburg Rescue Squad. Okay. And I was able to get some tremendous opportunities through my years of, of being a volunteer at the rescue squad and actually from my years of being on the rescue squad is the idea of life care is, is born okay as I'm, I'm running at the rescue squad so um, I give the credit to my community service to where I ended up as, as a, a career and while I was on the rescue squad I started off as a junior member and had an opportunity to get in a leadership position. And then when I was old enough to get on the what we call the senior rescue squad, I immediately started getting involved and, and leading small groups of people, starting off as a team leader. And eventually, I worked my way up to the captain of the rescue squad, which was the highest volunteer position at the time. Today, they call that the chief. Okay. And while I was serving as captain, I saw some opportunities in the Fredericksburg community that uh, was the birth of the idea for life care. So uh, that, that leadership journey led me to uh, what I do full time. And I just want to point out that my leadership journey has been very rewarding because not only has it been on the local level with what I just discussed, mm -hmm. but the regional level, whether right. it be with the uh, regional um, EMS council, which I've mm -hmm. served as president for many years, and then currently with the uh, Chamber of Commerce serving mm -hmm. on the board. You know, that interest was spiked when I went through the uh, Leadership Fredericksburg program. Yes. <laughs> and found out a lot more about the chamber. I liked what I heard. I liked what I saw. Yay. And, you know, you, you get involved and you get on committees and, and you just know that it's right. And then today, I'm proud to say that I'm serving as vice chair and, and I'm surrounded by a lot of awesome people. Yes. So uh, that's been a big part of my leadership journey. And then on the state level, I've had the opportunity through my involvement in emergency medical services to lead a couple statewide organizations. So 
The first one is the Virginia Association of Volunteer Rescue Squads. And oh, okay. I served as two terms as president of that organization, and that represents all the volunteer rescue squads throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. Yeah. So that's a, a different type of leadership because everybody's a volunteer, yes. and you have to lead them differently than you would people that are getting a paycheck. Sure. And then uh, after serving as the president of that organization, I went to the other extreme and served as president of the Virginia Ambulance Association, which is the paid providers. Okay. So I served two terms with that organization. And then currently on the state level, I'm honored to be serving as the chair of the governor's EMS advisory board. And so that's a board of uh, physicians and leaders throughout the uh, public safety sector throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia that makes recommendations to improve EMS service uh, statewide and also make recommendations to the governor. Nice. So, so that's been very rewarding. And then my leadership journey doesn't stop at the state level. I've had some opportunities on the national level. So I worked with a small group of people, and we started the 501c3 nonprofit called the National EMS Memorial Service. And the goal and mission of that organization uh, is to recognize EMS providers, paramedics, and EMTs that have died in the line of duty. Mm. And uh, that's been an awesome leadership opportunity because we're truly making a difference in people's lives nationwide. And then on the international level, um, my EMS experience has taken me to start a exchange program two decades ago with Germany. We have a paramedic exchange program where on the even numbered years, the Germans will come over to America and spend about a month with us and learn about management, leadership, and, and vision of the future. And then on the odd number of years, we'll send a handful of people over to Germany and they'll do the same thing. And I think the sign of a strong leader is somebody that gets involved in something. And if they step aside, that program continues to go. Yeah. And most of these programs that I've, I've talked about, I've been very fortunate in the fact that whether I'm leading it or whether I step aside, it continues to go. So it's it's been a, an honor to be involved with all of those. Okay, wow. So I, I knew about a lot of that, but I'm, I'm taking it all in, listening to you and thinking about our listeners going, wow, wow, wow. So back at the beginning when you talked about um, being a volunteer, a junior rescue squad volunteer, and having the idea originally for the business. You know, Kevin, a lot of people, there, there's nothing wrong with this. A lot of people stay in that same spot. There's something in you that's an entrepreneur and then a leader and then strategic and just doesn't stop. It's like you're so solution-oriented, too. You know, what, was it purely a business thing or what, what made you want to go out and start Life Care? instead of just kind of continuing down the path that existed for you there? Well, that's a great question. I, I would say there was there were two motivating factors. One is I'm a strong believer in giving back to the community, so I felt starting life care would be a way to continue <coughs> to give back to the community. Yep. And then secondly, I certainly had that uh, entrepreneurial uh, desire and when you have that desire you've got to also be willing to fail so when i came up with the idea of life care i'd already come up with some other business opportunities that i wanted to try and they did not get off the ground so oh i don't usually hear about those we won't make you go there <laughs> <laughs> but you know I, I tell people when i talk about life care it's sort of like that person who likes to go fishing you know when they're not at work they go fishing and they enjoy it well, in my spare time, I'd like to, to volunteer for the community, and, and I would run with the volunteer rescue squad. So now I'm getting paid to do what I was volunteering to do. So I have the best of both worlds. So I, I love what I do. Um, it's a great feeling knowing that you make a difference in the community. It's a great feeling knowing that you make a difference in people's lives. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've got the best of both worlds. I was volunteering to do it, and now it's my career. That's pretty awesome. And, you know, you ha taking a passion like that makes your work just so fulfilling. You Absolutely. Know, you're doing something you love. Um, I've heard you tell a couple stories over the years um, that I'm, I think I'm going to kind of pull on. Um, one is around 9-11 and some of the things that you and Life Care did um, at that time. You want to share some of that? I can just leave it at that. Yeah, ab absolutely. So um, we all 
can probably remember what we were doing and where we were at when the 9-11 event occurred and when the terrorist uh, attacked America. I was fortunate enough to be surrounded by a lot of wonderful people at Life Care that uh, had the same uh, community involvement and wanting to do the right thing. So when the Pentagon was attacked, uh, I received a phone call from our dispatcher, and the dispatcher said that one of our ambulances had just witnessed the jet crash into the Pentagon. They were actually on their way back from dropping off a patient in Washington, D.C., and ended up being one of the first on the scene. And the dispatcher asked, well, you know, what should we do? And I said, take every available ambulance that doesn't have a patient on board and divert them and send them up to the Pentagon. So we did that. And as I was en route back to the office, I met several of our ambulances running lights and sirens heading up there. And it, it certainly was a good feeling in my heart to see our people responding to a national emergency like that. And then as the event continued to unfold, other agencies throughout Virginia wanted to help. And Life Care in Stafford County at our corporate office became the staging area for the Commonwealth of Virginia. So ambulances from Virginia Beach and Wythe County and all sections and sectors of Virginia would report up here to the Fredericksburg region and stage. And then as they needed more help up in Arlington at the Pentagon, they would call our dispatcher and request, you know, 10 additional ambulances or whatever number, and we would send them from there. And one of the things that makes me so proud about our community is the way that everybody is so supportive and the way that everybody comes together. So while we had all of these people at Life Care waiting to be deployed to go up there, the local businesses and the local people in the community came together and showed up with food and mm -hmm. water and ice and just anything they thought that we would need. So we just really live in a phenomenal uh, community. Yeah, yeah, we really do. Um, and, and, you know, as, as people are listening to this, they can be all over the world. Um, to visualize that with 9-11 here in the United States, where we are located in the Fredericksburg, Virginia region, uh, if there is no traffic, um, we are probably about 45 minutes from the Pentagon, um, a straight shot right Correct. up I-95. I um, with traffic, it can be it can be a longer road. But uh, it hit pretty darn close to home there when Kevin says one of his ambulances right, was right there because that's in northern Virginia. Um, internationally, it may be associated with Washington, D.C. That's just right outside the, the doors of Washington, D.C., but just up the road, really, from us where That's we're right. located. Um, and so for us, though, to have that impact because of you and Life Care is, is really phenomenal. We thank you for that. Now, more recently, um, you know, we are now it's March 2022, as you and I are talking, um, and in the last two years, of course, there's been a horrific pandemic in, in the world. And the first days of that, the first months, um, gosh, just just such a dark time and uh, that we're coming out of. And so many of us didn't know what to do or how to respond. And once again, <coughs> excuse me, you guys were just on it. Um, and I believe you all had a role um, in one of the hot spots, if that's the right term, for um, the first really wave and bad spread of the pandemic in New York City, right? That's correct. And you sent you, some of your folks went up there. Can you share some of that? Yeah, absolutely. So we can all look back and remember when the COVID first hit, how scary it was, and, and nobody knew a whole lot about it. And the challenge for us was that our team had to lead individuals to make sure that they would come to work every day and still respond to the emergencies when a lot of people were being told to stay home. And many of us, as we were watching the news programs on TV, saw the horrific conditions up in New York. And the governor was on the television pleading for help. They didn't have enough ventilators. They didn't have enough hospital beds. And, and they needed help. And our people rose to the occasion, and in a very short period of time, we put together uh, about 30 personnel and multiple ambulances, and they all met at Life Care, and we briefed everybody, and they responded up to New York City. And when they left the Fredericksburg area, we didn't know if they would be going up there to help for two or three days or for a week. And over a month later, they came back home. And 
one of the scariest things that sticks in my mind when we went up there was at that point in time, there was not enough mask to go around and people were using the homemade mask and we were no different. We didn't have the needed mask and here we were sending people right in the home's way. So to see the community once again come together and churches and local people were showing up at our doorstep and bringing homemade masks and saying, here, you know, this is the way I want to contribute and help out just was um, overwhelming in a very positive way to us. And I'm really proud of the fact that of the 30 employees that we sent up there over a month later when they came home, not one person was injured, not one person uh, was sick. And a lot of the people that they worked with from other areas uh, didn't make it home. And so we're just very fortunate to have such dedicated people at Life Care that not only are dedicated to the community that we live in, but when there's a call anywhere in the nation, they step up and help out. Yeah, wow, what a story. Uh, what a picture you paint with that. Um, and a reminder of um, really the business you do. It is in service, but it's also something that you know can be life and death for even your own employees. Absolutely. Wow. Um, thank you for that. Um, and leading the way you do, because you could have just responded here locally and done maybe just what you can manage here, but you went above and beyond and care for the bigger, broader community, and that's just absolutely amazing. Probably hurt your business model, I'm going to guess, financially. It, it does, and I, I appreciate you bringing that up because a lot of people are, are very appreciative of the people, for example, that responded to New York, and, and we're yep. very proud of, of those heroes that did that. But on the flip side of that, I'm also very proud of those that stayed back because when you have that many people leave on a moment's notice, there's yep. multiple shifts that have to be filled, and the people that stayed back filled their own shifts and stepped up and filled all those vacant shifts that were left because we still did need to serve the, the local community and, mm -hmm. and we couldn't see a, a lapse in coverage. Oh, amazing. Yeah. And one of the things around here now um, that this made me think about, too, one of the ways that you lead on a committee here at the chamber, we have a transportation committee. I mentioned traffic a couple of times already. Um, often this whole region of Fredericksburg, right off of the 95 corridor, can be just mired in transportation. I mean, in transportation, yes, we are, but in traffic congestion. Um, and so that's one of the <laughs> scariest things about that is when an ambulance can't get through, you know. Um, I guess just talk about why um, why being involved with the transportation improvements, why you do that, what, why that's important for you, industry, and others. Well, related to our business, it, it's very important because the example you just gave, when somebody has uh, a call for help and mm -hmm. they have a life-threatening emergency, they mm -hmm. expect the public safety sector to get there quickly. And when the roads are clogged up and they're blocked, sometimes physically it's very difficult to do. So by being involved on the Transportation Committee, it gives me and the others on that committee the opportunity to, to make a difference in the region. So whether we're going up to Congress in, in Washington, D.C. and talking about legislative changes or whether we're going down to Richmond and talking to members of the General Assembly, we can get people's attention. We can give them real-life scenarios and get them to understand the importance of making some changes, mm -hmm. and that, that makes a difference in the future. And, and that's just a really good feeling, knowing that you get involved on something, and then years down the road, you, you see the outcome of your efforts. Yeah, I, I love, I just feel like listening to you, you're just, he's never satisfied with, you know, like we, we get the bar just so high and we've got to take it higher. That's right. There's more we can do, right? Absolutely. You know, is there somebody in your life um, that mentored you or that you looked up to or what example, like, do you think has led you to have that, that quest for more and better? Well, that, that's an interesting question and I, I'll go as far back to high school when I answer that, I was taking a, a government class and our instructor, our teacher, asked us to come in the next day and talk about somebody that we mm -hmm. really admired that, that was making a difference for people. Yeah, yeah. And across the board, everybody that got up the next morning and spoke picked some national figure. And I was the only person that came back in and 
talked about a local person. And for those people who have lived in our area for a long time, uh-huh. there was a gentleman by the name of Sam Perry. Oh, yes. And he was very involved with the local city council and very involved with the local volunteer rescue squad. And I just admired him for his ability to motivate people and get other people to see a vision on how we can make things better in, in the community that we live in. So even to this day, a lot of times when I make a decision, I'll find myself thinking back about Sam Perry. So he had a huge impact on me. I love it. And if you if you ever in Fredericksburg, you'll see Sam Perry Boulevard right here over by Mary Washington That's Hospital. Right. Um, also near that, Kevin, is Gordon Shelton Boulevard. So that would be my person like yours. That's right. Um, he's over in Central Park by, <coughs> excuse me, by Wegmans. And he served on city council for 24 years, uh, representing Ward 1 in the city of Fredericksburg. And he was a very small business owner who I think, I think Gordon got injured or something and then then his time changed and he started volunteering and doing more in the community again that community service That's right i met him late in his life he was in his last terms on council when my father went on and um it lists watching the things that these leaders did in our community i'm the same way as you it it inspired me you know absolutely um just just giants and i you know somewhere i hope they hear us you know, I hope they're listening and watching, and maybe they're proud of us, too. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I hope they know the influence that their leadership and guidance had on us, you know? Yeah, and that, that's very impactful when you're a leader and you're making the phenomenal changes that both of those men made. Mm-hmm. And now both of those men are no longer with us, but still their legacy is helping make changes today. So that, that says a lot about their leadership. It really does. It really does. Well, as you think about folks who are just starting out or t- wanting to lead today, what, what advice would you give someone starting out now as you look back? Well, uh, the biggest piece of advice I would give somebody is you have to have a commitment to be a lifelong learner. So if you're willing to do that, then I think you can be a successful leader. And the other thing is have the ability and the skill set to be a good listener a lot of times when we talk to people, we think we already know the answer, and it's human nature sometimes just to answer somebody's question before they're finished talking. But it's very important to to be a good listener, hear somebody out, and understand that we don't always know the answer to everything. If we just take the time to step back and listen to people, we can, we can learn from everybody. So I, I'm just a firm believer in that. Well, and I think it can be you have to be comfortable enough, too, to say when you don't know the answer. Right, especially as a leader, to say absolutely, you know, it's a good question. Let me look into that. Yeah, and I, and I tell people on a regular basis, you know, I, I don't know all the answers. I'm certainly willing to make a decision and go down a certain path. Mm-hmm. But if you have a better idea, I have no problem taking a step back and going down a different path. Yeah, please, pr- please bring me the ideas. <laughs> we absolutely, love them. we do. I'm going to ask you one more thing on work, and then we'll be where we already need to wind it down. Um, thinking back to seeing the ambulances around town, um, some of your ambulances are themed and um, for, for, for personal and other reasons. Can you share a little bit about that? Because I just think it's really special. Well, I, I appreciate you asking about that. So I guess a model that I, I have in life is if you're going to do something for me, don't wait till I die and, and bring flowers to the funeral. Give me the flowers while I can enjoy them when I'm alive. So I'm a big proponent of if you want to do something and honor somebody, do it when they can see it and when they can appreciate it. And with our themed ambulances, instead of having a great person pass away and, and do an ambulance in honor of that person or in memory of that person, I should say, we take and have themed ambulances and we dedicate them in honor of somebody who's um, still working with us so whether it be alzheimer's awareness or uh, heart health or child abuse awareness diabetes just a large number of, of themed ambulances and our very first one we did probably about 10 years ago and it was breast cancer awareness and uh, we actually had the first pink ambulance in the state, and it was a really big deal back then, and we had an unveiling where people in the community came forth, and then we dedicate each of those ambulances to somebody that's been affected by that d- disease, and it it makes the people very proud that they're being honored, and it also gets the word out so people have a better understanding of the um, disease. 
So uh, that, that's that been a, a, a big hit in the community, and, and people on a regular basis will request those ambulances to come to public events. Oh, yeah. They're, they're really uh, nicely done. If, you, if you're somebody that can't make it to Fredericksburg, I'm sure they're – Probably pictures on your website. Absolutely. Yeah, so you can check that out. Um, just just look up Life Care Medical Transports in, in Virginia, and it'll come right up, and you'll see it. And see more about, about their wonderful work. Wow. I'm so enjoying talking to you. And I get to talk to you all the time, so this, this is even more special because I'm getting to share you with the world. So well, thank, thank you. thank you, Susan. Yeah. Well, as we do wind down, I wanted to ask if you have a favorite motto or saying, something you'd like to share with us. Um, well, I would say my motto is, pretty simple is uh, always try to do your best and and try to lead by example and i truly tried to to do that in my life and, and i think if we take that simple motto it, we can make a difference whether it be in our local community or in our bigger community oh, that's great thank you thanks for that and is there anything else you would want to share with listeners no i, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today and and certainly the people that are in our local community if they want to get more involved and become a leader of the in the future we've got a wonderful program with the uh, leadership fredericksburg and i would highly encourage people to consider getting involved with that program and and for those who uh, can't get involved in the program for some reason if they get involved with the chamber we have many committees that people can participate in and they can all in a small way make a difference in the community that we live in oh that's Thank you for that. Uh, it's just been an absolute pleasure today. So I've enjoyed having you, and I think I think we're going to have to do another episode um, sometime in the future. Does that sound good? That sounds good. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, I am Susan Spears, and our guest today was Kevin Dillard, the co-founder, president, and CEO of Life Care Medical Transports here in Fredericksburg, Virginia. If you have not already subscribed to the Chambers We Are Business podcast, go ahead and do so so you know when the new episodes are available. And while you're at it, if you could jump over and give us a review so other listeners can find us easily, we would be so appreciative. Thank you. We'll see you next time.